Hello and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fiber Studio. Today's date is September 24th, 2015. It's a Thursday night and we're going to do Fibercast just a day early because I'm going to be on the road working tomorrow night. So welcome. Hopefully some of you saw my announcement on Facebook that we were doing it, but if not, you'll just see the recording tomorrow night. So hi, I hope all is well. I am going to be rug hooking. It's finally time, fall is here. This rug that I started 10 years ago just has to be finished. And you'll see that behind me I have my fall quilt, or it's Bob's in my fall quilt that Karen and my mother made for us for our wedding anniversary. And actually that's coming up on 16 years. So we have a lot of time travels. We have a lot of past time things that we're talking about today. And you may hear my dog. Allie is down back, and I set this up so that hopefully you can see some of this. Allie's downstairs, and she's barking. So I have drawn out some roses, some yellow roses. And I am starting with a door six-patch. This one actually isn't quite the colors that I'm using, but I'm going to show it to you just to give you an idea for anyone out there who hasn't rug hooked yet. <laughs> there are door produces or has in the past, these are very old, so these are 10 years old, they're upstairs in my attic, different shades of a color that you can use to do color work and to do shading. And you can do it with very fine, like number threes. I'm actually going to use number fives, which again refers to the width of each strip of wool. And I'm going to try and knock out a few of these roses. I found my blue, my background, and I... There's the dog. I literally only have about three quarters of a yard left, so that's not going to be enough for the background. So I think what I'm going to do pretty soon is start on the edges of this rug and work in so that at least the edges have blue. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to have to get creative, probably fill in with flowers where I don't have blue. So, um, But I found lots of things like my green, and I found a big bin of of colors. So let's see what we can get done. I know watching hooking isn't really as interesting as watching maybe um, quilting, but I really, since Fibercast is just all about all of us getting something done for 60 minutes, I figured if you're working, we could talk and maybe, who knows, maybe we'll listen to music. But um, I hoped that you would indulge me in getting this project done because it just, it would be a shame not to finish it. And I do enjoy hooking and I enjoyed making this. I was telling, I think when we had Sarah Kokonowski on, we were talking about when I started this rug and how I started it up at the Green Mountain Rug Hooking School back in 2005. That is a great school if anyone wants a fun week of fiber. It's a camp, and they, actually they may have moved it, but when I went, it was at the Vermont Technical College in Rutland. So I'm using my very lightest yellow on the outer part of the rose. And these roses are not fine shaded roses, believe me. They're just, I want them to suggest, give the suggestion of a rose. So, um, which is a cup. And I probably, just like when I'm shading with a pencil, I start with my lights and my darks. Actually, I probably always should just start with my lights and scope it all in. But for this, why, hello, Allie. Have you been barking? Yes, you have. I think our viewers may have heard you. Oh, there you go. Go lie down. <laughs> she is our black lab, and she has gone deaf. So she has enjoyed now barking more than ever before. Okay. So I'm creating the bottom cup of the rose. 
And So how is everyone's week going so far? I mentioned I'm not going to be here tomorrow night because I am going to New Orleans. There's a, it's going to be fun. We're going to the, oh, the new Roosevelt Hotel and we're celebrating new digital government applications and processes from across the country. And I'm very impressed at the creativity that is being shown. So it will be fun. No, Allie. Okay. So. I guess I'm just putting in the very darkest here. I don't know if you can see this, but hooking is nothing more than just pulling up loops and I'm feeding it underneath. So if Carol by any chance can see me from her hospital bed, hi Carol. I hope you're feeling better and that the pain is subsiding. We were so surprised to hear that you were back in the hospital. For those of you who may not have heard, Carol was in, had her appendix out back in July. And they had to go back in and take more of it out. They didn't quite get it all. Well, I was going to use a little bit of some white to really pop. I probably should reserve it. There's a lip of the flower that is falling over, and the sun is right on it. That's what I am imagining anyway. So that's where this white's going. And I realize you really cannot see this on your, on your screen. So, so Maggie wrote with a suggestion for a new for a name for my new sewing machine. Remember my my um, my Sloan Ashland machine that I showed everyone last week that was so powerful it was shaking the whole camera when I was sewing? Well I still love it and I have a story to tell you about cleaning it this week. But Maggie wrote in because she heard us talking about the fact that we needed a good name and she reminded me of olive oil from Popeye, Popeye's girlfriend there. And remember I said I wanted to name it Oil Can because it, um, because I had told Bob that I was buying an oil can. Well, she suggested olive oil, O-Y-L. And so I think that's going to be the name. I know that is. That's what I'm going to call that sewing machine. I'm going to call her Olive. So thank you, Maggie. Now, Speaking of olive, I, oh, oh, I meant to bring it over. I cannot wait to show you this. I'll show it to you next week. I decoupage the outside of her machine, of her box, and I re-glued pieces of the fabric that have been coming undone, and I love it. I decoupage somewhat matching fabric, so it's, it's not, actually, at first I decoupaged the wrapping paper, um, oh, um, wrapping paper from downstairs. It had, it had blue snowmen on it because it's a blue and white case and that was just too shocking. So anyway, I put blue and white fabric over that and I've decoupaged the whole thing. I've cleaned it up. I wiped off all the dirt and the mildew. There was a little mildew on it 
and glued things down, and I really like it. So then I thought, well, that was step one. Now it's time to clean her and oil her. So I went and, oh, and, and I can't remember who, I think it was a few of you, told me how to use the oil can correctly. And I'm embarrassed that I didn't know how to use it at first. It was kind of like an oh, duh, because I have seen the use of it. Maybe even my father and grandfather at the garage were using oil cans, or Gramp, I can remember. Basically, the oil can I showed everyone last week, remember I said when I dunked it over, it wasn't coming out? Well, I had to push the bottom of the oil can to push it out. And the, the oil of the can goes, Doo! it kind of like, ticks in and out. Anyway, that worked great and on the top of the machine Marquet has been helping me. It didn't pull off. Instead there is a little there are little pieces that pull out of the machine and then there's a little little like a, a metal nipple on the top and you take the oil and can and you push it down on the nipple which goes descends, depresses and then you put some oil through that way. So I learned a lot and I was able to take off pieces that I could and then I put it all back together and I was feeling good, you know, and I used the, all the right tools. And then I go to plug it in and the darn thing, I scared myself to death, the darn thing would not stop sewing. It just went at the highest speed, no matter what I did. And I thought maybe the, um, the bobbin mechanism had been turned on or something. Anyway, ultimately I ended up calling Kathy at the Charlton Sewing Center to ask her if she fixed machines or could oil them. Literally, I went to bed and I thought, oh, I ruined this machine that I've been raving about. And come to find out, it was nothing more than I called her and she told me over the phone, there are two, two, um, places to plug in the machine. And if you get them mixed up backwards, the machine will go nonstop. So that's what happened. So, pretty funny. And in the process, I learned that she has a machine cleaning class on in October. And I'm going to go. And I think Sarah is going to come with me, which is great. And Kathy is only charging, well, only, she's charging two rolls of quarters for a Worcester laundry charity for the homeless. So she will get donate those rolls of quarters to them so they can wash their clothes. So it's all good. So I'm literally drawing with this. wool, creating contrast where the cup of the flower petals meet. And then the medium tones will just fill things in. And I keep looking at the picture to make sure It'll have some semblance to a rose when we're done. And again, I want it to be like an artsy rose. It doesn't have to be perfectly shaded or even perfectly shaped. So Olive is doing well, my new machine. There we go. Meanwhile, here at home, I was told last night by Bob 
that I needn't dream up any more home improvement projects. <laughs> I think that's a good idea, don't you? We ended up, and it's not that I really did, but several years ago when he was doing woodworking out in the garage, he had a piece of wood went kind of flying, or it did go flying, and it went up into the back of the garage door and as a result pushed a panel from the garage door off that you see from the street. So for several years we've had this one piece of the garage door the panel that's been off. So as I was out there washing windows this weekend I suggested to him that maybe we should fix that. Well, one thing led to another and it has been a week-long project and he has made He's, he's in the process of fixing the panel, but he has also stripped the whole two front doors and cleaned them up, and he's staining them, and then he'll, he'll put, I guess, penafin or some sort of oil on them. So it's become a big project, but it's beautiful. And so he, he proceeded to list to me an awful lot of other projects that he needs to get done between now and Thanksgiving. So... I promised I wouldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to stick with this color all the way through. Kelly, <coughs> people know you're there. So can you believe that Halloween is almost a month away? Remember last year we dressed up as Jane Sickle. wonder what we're going to do this year. Oh, you're all set. Mm. This is going to make for really good fiber toast. A barking dog and quiet rug hooking. Oh. You may want to turn the, turn the volume of fiber cast off and play some music. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. I was going to read a few quotes. I thought that would be fun. And you'll see I'm just kind of mixing this up. Oh, this was kind of fun. If I have it here. Black watch plaid makes such good background for, for rugs. It makes everything else pop. It looks almost black, but it's mottled.
I guess rug hooking is a good thing to do, well, in front of the TV or with a group of people. Um, the camps are a blast because it really, it's like coloring with wool. So it doesn't require too much thinking, although something like this requires for me a little bit more, especially since I'm new to getting back into it. Um, when you're doing shading, it just requires a little bit more. But really, it's fun to do in a group. Highly recommend it. And you know what? It's so easy to learn. Did you hear the dog just leave? <laughs> Who knows what sort of rambunctiousness she's going to get into. She basically is missing Bob, I think. And Bob is with Carol right now over at the hospital. He had a showing and then he was going over there. I should put this on. This is a great thing. It's a magnet. Got all sorts of things stuck to it. But literally, if I put it there, then, and I need to, I guess, pin it on. Oh, I have the hiccups. Excuse me. Well, clearly, I've not done diaper pins very often. It is stuck. Oh, excuse me. All right. Just leave it there for a second to see how that works. I don't think that's going to work. So I guess it hasn't been all that exciting a week. We've just been working away. As I say, Bob's been working on the cellar door, or the garage door. <clears throat> We've enjoyed <laughs> some new TV shows. I watched Scream Girls on Fox. Very funny, actually, because it's so ridiculous. So if you're looking for something Light. It's kind of like Animal House for girls, but a little different. There isn't really, so far, as, <laughs> as much drinking, but someone dies every show. And um, they've got the sorority sisters end up having a fair number of secrets, I guess, over time. And we don't know who's doing the killing. So it's quite funny. Yeah. And what else? Watch The Voice. I always like The Voice. And of course the judges all look fit and trim as ever. I should be cutting this away so I can see what it's looking like. You know the little ends that stick up? You know my Adam Carolla, my favorite podcaster? 
when they have when they do funny things or whatever happens, they'll say, "Oh, that's some good podcast." When it really it really isn't, but it's funny. That's what I feel like when I do rug hooking on the on Fibercast. I think, "Oh, this is this is some good Fibercast here or not?" Because you can't see it. I know Sarah has talked about putting a camera overhead, and I can't wait for her to do that so that we can learn how she does it. Um, I think maybe, let's see, what's in the middle there? Okay. Oh. oh, yeah, I forgot. If anyone's out there, you can send me email at l marquidot. Maybe we'll do a little bit of really, really, really dark in there. Yeah. Center of the rose. There we go. All yellow makes for a dull rose. In fact, this is where you can really kind of cheat and create some real contrast with a different color. The opposite of yellow is purple, so that's also a good one. And this brown kind of has some purple in it. You can make it pop that way. Um, Oh, you know what? I just went into a zen, a zen-like state, and I forgot you were there. <laughs> I bet you forgot I was here too. Let's read a quote. <laughs> Let's get some brain juices going. Sorry about that, everyone. That was pretty funny. I started thinking about work. Okay. Compassion. So this is a collection of brilliant quotations for a beautiful life. And this is thanks to Sarah. Compassion. Beginning today, treat everyone you meet as if they were going to be dead by midnight. Ooh, that's, this is not good. Extend to them all the care, kindness, and understanding you can muster and do it with no thought of any reward. Your life will never be the same again. Needless to say, I didn't read these beforehand. Confidence. You gain strength, courage, and confidence 
by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You must do the things you think you cannot do. Eleanor Roosevelt. Hmm. Excellence. It says never neglect the little things. Never skimp on that extra effort, that additional few minutes, that soft word of praise or thanks, that delivery of the very best that you can do. It does not matter what others think. It is of prime importance, however, what you think about you. You can never do your best, which should always be your trademark. If you are cutting corners and shirking responsibilities. Okay, you can never do your best if you're cutting corners and shirking responsibilities. You're special. Act on it and never neglect the little things. This is Og Mandino. I don't know if I like those quotes. Okay, one more, then I'll go back to rug hooking. Experiences. You are the books you read, the films you watch, the music you listen to, the people you meet, the dreams you have, and the conversations you engage in. You are what you take from these. You are the sound of the ocean, the breath of fresh air, the brightest light, and the darkest corner. You are a collection of every experience you have had in your life. You are every single day. So drown yourself in a sea of knowledge and existence. Let the words run through your veins and let the colors fill your mind. Okay, one more. I know I keep saying that. Hope. And this is by Emily Dickinson. She says, Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. I like that one a lot. I'm going to keep that open. I like that a lot. Oh, and I do need to cut some more. This is looking like a big, hot, yellow mess. This is my Townsend cutter that I am just, I just love. Okay, let's get this puppy done. So I can show it to you. I tell you, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time off camera rug hooking. Is that a deal? So we can get to making our dolls and our dear Jane blocks. People liked last week's um, episode, so thank you for the feedback. And that was fun, that chain link block. Very easy to do. That's for sure. You kind of don't. Oh, let's see who's out there, if anyone's out there. Thank you, DD Quilter, DDR Quilter. I really appreciate your retweets. Thanks a lot. Let's see who's out there. Hey, Rainy. Oh, we haven't heard from you in a while. I'm so glad you're there. How are you? How's my traveler? She says, hi, I will be watching you on the tablet and the Pope on the TV. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Isn't it cool that he's here? Both inspirational <laughs> nods to the Pope. Amen. She says, feeling better, haven't sewn in weeks, getting ready for a visit from my daughter and granddaughter. 
and excited about a new Bonnie mystery. See you soon, Renee. Oh, I hope that you're feeling a little better. Maybe getting inspired, your daughter and your granddaughter coming down will be fun. Oh. I'm glad you wrote, and I'm glad you're on. Even if it's something different that you've never done, it might be fun to try. That's funny. Doesn't the Pope look cute in his little fiat? Okay. A Ellen, welcome. Welcome to Fibercast. And Beth, welcome. Let's see. And Lindy Lee. She says, first time watching, love your video. Question about adding the date. One day I hope to sell the quilts I'm making. I was wondering if I have a quilt date from years past, if that would harm its resaleability. Well, you definitely like artwork. You want to have very recent dates to sell it. I know that much. Um, you don't want old things or you can, um, like watercolors, let's say you had a bin of watercolors, you'd want to try to keep those more current. I think as far as quilts or rugs or something, um, hmm, what did I do? I think I would date it. And the reason being that the fabric itself is dateable. So let's say you made something this year and you kept it for 10 years and then decided to sell it. It really wouldn't be authentic or, or people people would really know if you dated it 10 years from now because the fabric wouldn't be fresh or clean or new or uh, in the style 10 years from now. So I'm inclined to put the date that you finished it on and I think very quickly you might find that the contrary is true that time flies. As we've said, this is 10 years in the making and I've just pulled it out. Bob and I have been married for 16 years and that went like that. So I bet you'd be surprised if you date your quilts. Before you know it, they're going to have a lot of more value in the actual age of them, if that makes sense. How's that for a spin? So i date them. And welcome, Lindy. I'm so glad you're on. Oh, and Evelyn, who sent me the kitty, my kitty, she says, Grandma asked me to thank you for sharing the Evelyn Kitty on Fibercast light last night. One day she will teach me how to be a fiber artist, just like you. And that's an email from Olivia, and Olivia puts her picture. Isn't she beautiful? Thank you. Kathy K. Hi, Kathy. Kathy writes that she's seeing some websites doing the farmer's wife quilt along. And she says her daughters bought the book for her, and it sounds fun. I agree. It sounds like a lot of fun. And she thought she would share it. She says, I know, I know, we all need another project, like we need a hole in our head, but if you want, I can give you the names I found. Talk to you soon, Kathy. We'll certainly post them on the Simply Colorful Facebook page or send them to me, and I can share them. You're right. I think I'm going to try to hold off. I have my dear Jane and that I have to finish before I start another type of sampler quilt. But I'd love to see your pictures. So that's what I'm thinking about that. Oh, and I did do some research on the Missouri quilt um, quilting company, their trips or their, their slumber parties. And they have at least three of them scheduled, one for the weekend of December 4th, one for the weekend of February 4th, and then one, I think, February 18th, that weekend. Looks like a three-day thing. You definitely you sleep upstairs with a bunch of, of beds in the same room, so you kind of have to be comfortable being uh, sleeping with, with strangers, but we're all quilters, so maybe that doesn't matter. And I want to say it's $350 for three full days of quilting there on site at the retreat. You get a Jenny Doan. She'll come and do a trunk show for us. Um, doesn't include airfare and I checked airfare and that was going to be about $300 from here in Boston out to Kansas City is where you fly into. 
So I did a little research, and who knows? Maybe we'll just do that. I have to say, I have to get through October right now with all this travel. But it sure is fun to dream about. And I have to finish my rug. Several of you, like Maureen with her Hummel cross stitch, have been writing and saying that you've been finishing things that were partially done, and that is great news. It really is more satisfying than I thought it might be. I'm not careful, I'm going to go into that, that zen-like state again. La, 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 la. can hear the peepers outside. Oh, Bob and I went for a nice kayak ride or float the other day. So, what about this really? This may be my last rug cooking episode. <laughs> I keep, I keep dozing off or thinking about other things. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like when I go on car rides. Do you ever fall asleep? Oh, plus you guys are all watching the Pope anyway. <laughs> Oh, Rini, I'm so glad you're down there. Joni, I thought of you because you were on a quilting cruise. And Joni, I don't know if you heard, went out to Hawaii and took some classes in Maui at that quilt shop. So I love how everyone gets around. And Jen from Perth, we haven't heard from Jen. I wonder how her trip went. Oops. Let's push. All right, let's do some, this is not looking like a rose. Houston, we're having a problem. Here we go.
go. Well, let's think about Halloween. What are people going to be for Halloween? Anyone dressing up? Aside from my sister who was making Batman for Nick, the Batman costume. Na 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 Okay, I'm going to create a little bit of a white, sort of like on a balloon, when the, or in your eye when light is bounced off the roundness of it. You get that little white speck. That's what I'm creating here on this utmost, lightest piece of the rose petal. I'll show you on the picture. Oh, that's what happened to the rose picture. So here's the rose that I'm making. And right up in there, I'm pretending that there's like a little spot that's even whiter than that light, light, light yellow. We'll see if it works. With rug hooking, all you're doing is filling in white space. Maybe we'll have to read a quote in a minute. Everyone has to wish my mother a good trip. She is getting on a plane to go see my sister in a few days. So that will be fun. this all off. My goodness, it's taken me almost an hour to do one rose. 
I forgot that doing this shading does take longer, but it's okay. Hopefully you can see a little bit. I'll try and pull it off when this is done. Thankfully, we might almost be done with our hour. I hope you all have gotten something done, because remember what we say. It's amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes. We just put our head down. One hooked rows, a couple of knitted rows. I hope, hope, hope you have enjoyed it. That's the key is enjoying what you're doing, what you spend time on. Because it is true, life is too short to do things you don't want to do. I think I've probably told you this. I remember complaining to my father years ago about how about my commute to work and how it was long or something. And he said, "Well, make it recreation. Can you make it?" And it's he was right. When I learned to look out the window and see pretty things that I was going by, I was enjoying it a lot more. This big final rose petal is very light, so I'm trying to do it in very light yellows. Hi, Allie. Allie has just pulled out a bag of 48 forks that I got for textile tarts. She's going to discover it doesn't taste very good. Hmm. Okay, and I may this again. Lello. Yellow, 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 yellow. Yellow. What you doing there, Pook? I'm almost done, and then I'll show this to you. And then mercifully, we'll call it call it a early fiber cast. Hi, Allie. I wish you could show people your face. Now watch that. Fibercast will be over and the dog is finally relaxed and calmed down. She just went, she just collapsed because her hip hurts. So she doesn't, she's not very graceful when she's, when she lies down and she just went harumph like, I'm going to rest now. Okay, so let's put all of these aside. And see, so you won't be able to see it too well yet because it's not outlined. Hmm. Let's use this. Isn't this pretty? The green. This is called gray green. I'm going to pull it apart and use it for the sepal. Karen, keep me honest. It's that little bit of the flower that is underneath the rose. It goes like that. 
I'll do it here and then I'll show it to you guys. Am I going over our time? No, we have two more minutes. <laughs> Two more minutes to endure. Okay. Oh, Allie. All right, all right, just a minute. Okay, let's show everyone. Our rows and then, like I say, we can all go be creative. Okay, so. That was the rows we were doing. And let's see. There we go. And there's the rows. Getting there. To start, I want to thank everyone for joining me on this impromptu, somewhat quiet Fibercast. I hope that you enjoyed the Pope. And I hope that you had something else you could watch or listen to while I rug hooked here. I was thankful for your company. And I'm sorry I'm going to miss you tomorrow night. So most of you are probably watching this on Friday night. So have a great Friday night. Have a good rest of the week. And I'll see you next Friday night on Fibercast at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Thanks very much for watching. And have a great week. Bye. <laughs>